Hey guys, welcome back. Let's take a look at some terrible human beings who actually took part in MMA and participated in fighting promotions with racist tattoos. How these people were allowed to participate is beyond me, but hey, at least we get to watch these idiots get destroyed in today's video. Let's get started, but first, give this video a like and subscribe as it really helps me out. Vicheslev Datskik has done very limited things in MMA, retiring in 2006 with a record of 6-9, but he did one thing right, and that was knocking out the criminal that is Alexander Emelianenko. <laughs> Outside the fighting arena, he has been a complete mess, committing multiple crimes and also being a white supremacist and having many neo-Nazi views. So when he got knocked out by Jerome LeBanner in kickboxing in his attempted return, it was a beautiful thing. It's unfortunate he was welcomed back by the Russian MMA community, but at least we get to see him on the canvas knock the freak out. Brendan Sailing has a rap sheet worthy of a terrible human being and also has a tattoo with an 88 symbol honoring the old German leader. It's safe to say that he sucks, but somehow he got past the application process and was allowed to participate in various promotions. Luckily though, he got destroyed by a rare move by Roger Bowling. Bowling was able to get the crucifix twice during the fight and managed to end it the second time, with the criminal getting destroyed in the second round, just absorbing punch after punch, being left all bloody, just like we like to see him. Philip Brezner was a controversial Czech bodybuilder who in the past has said some very terrible things about the Romanian people, including threatening to kill them. He also said some terrible things after beating Jaroslav Ola. Right after the win, he said a slur about Romanian people and then later tried to apologize on Instagram. But the damage was already done, especially when you include what he said in the past. This guy talks a ton of trash talk, but he can't really back it up at all, having only won one single fight, and that was against Jaroslav Ola. Every other fight has been lost by a TKO or by punches. He is just terrible. The best loss is when he got beat by Frederico Comunha by a knockout right after the Ola fight. It's a beautiful thing when such a hateful person gets knocked out, but even better when such a terrible fighter loses by getting destroyed each single freaking time. Corey Durden has a respectable record of 14 wins and 4 losses with 1 draw and right after getting smashed by Jimmy Flick by a flying triangle choke. He still had the gall to say some hateful things after beating Aori Killing, and barely at that by a decision after three rounds. Right after the fight, while giving the post-fight interview, he said that Killing should go back to China or wherever he's from. Just some of the most basic Karen type shit that you will ever hear. It's gonna be tough, but I had to send him back to China where he came from. And Mohamed Makhaev heard this and immediately tweeted to let him know that if he should smash Durden in his first fight. And well, he got his wish as he was able to get a contract to teach this guy a lesson. Durden learned a valuable lesson that the UFC is a freaking global brand and Dana is trying to spread that promotion everywhere so they can make more money. Everybody is welcome when there's a chance to make some money, especially Chinese fighters in a fast-growing market. Jonathan Ivey is a bit of a legend in MMA, doing some crazy things and just being a bit of an arrogant fighter. When he went to Tokyo to fight against Hikaru Sato, he decided to pull the stunt which many consider to be racist. All right, Sato is trying to crane check me. Look, is that racist? I don't think so, but it's a little insensitive considering that he was fighting a Japanese fighter. Unfortunately for him, Sato took this as an insult and decided to get some quick payback by knocking him out. Right straight hands for Ivy and lands a big straight hand. Ivy learned that he needs to maybe be less arrogant in his older age since his record is getting worse every single fight. 
Frank Quartz is a longtime criminal who has been allowed to fight in MMA and was added to the M1 roster. He has ties to neo-Nazi groups, but luckily he is not a great fighter, having a record of 6 wins and 8 losses, meaning that he gets wrecked all the time. But take a look at that fight where Hatef Moel did us all a favor and knocked him out. I don't know how this guy is allowed to even compete these many times considering the incredible terrible stuff that he's done, even serving time in jail. Time that didn't help him get on the straight and narrow, but luckily we get to see him lose. Alex Nicholson wasn't even fighting when he made racist remarks. He was in the corner for Mike Perry when he was fighting Lim Hing Yu and said that he can't even open his mother effing eyes. It was seen by many as a racist remark towards the Asian fighter. He later apologized saying he respects every fighter that steps in the cage, but the damage was already done. Luckily we get to see him knocked out with a single punch by Josh Copeland. Nicholson might have just gotten too excited, but many found this to be really unacceptable. Like I said, combat sports are a global thing, and every single group of people participates, and they must be accepted in order for the sport to grow everywhere. Sean Strickland is no longer a racist, or at least he claims he's not, but he said that in the past that he's had terrible ideas and even considered himself a neo-Nazi, and would draw the old German symbols on his body. It's not a perfect fit for this list, but when you can have some of these ideas really beat out of him by the beast that is Alex Pereira, it's always nice. Because he's oh! Strickland luckily joined MMA because he credits that with becoming more tolerant and ending all his old ideas. Strickland is still a bit crazy, saying that he would like to kill somebody in the octagon, but now he's just a really entertaining fighter. Hope you guys enjoyed these morons getting taught a lesson that hate has no place in MMA. Well, at least only the hate that comes with being competitive in the moment or from the rivalries that happened. Thanks for watching this video. I hope to see you next time.